Hi, everybody. This is video number 12 for probability. We are still looking at the OR formula. And we're going to use cards specifically. So determine the probability of each of the following. One card is drawn from a standard deck of cards. Use the formula to answer the questions. So this is a good page to um, figure out how and when to use the formulas. And let's see what we can do here. As always, at any point, what you should do, actually, actually, what y'all should do is stop the video right now, try them, try them all, give them a shot. If you're worried, do it in pencil and then turn the video back on or why don't you just check the answer key, check the answer key first and then see how many you got right. And if you got them all right, there's no use watching the video because you already know how to do this. That's the plan. All right, but I'm going to go through them because I need to make your answer key. A six or a seven. Okay, so I'm going to make this then S. Oh, I'll make this E. That doesn't make any sense, but I can't use a S for six and an S for seven. So the probability of um, drawing a six or a seven. Whoops, don't use numbers in there. That'll just get confusing. Is equal to the probability of six plus the probability of seven. Now we can keep going and do the and part, or you can just think about it now. If I'm drawing out sixes, oh look, there's sixes and seven. Six, seven, seven, six. Oops, get out of there, get out of there. I should have one more. There's my seven, and there's my six. Okay, so we already know this. See, there's my sevens, there's my sixes, and you know for sure which is which because there's no ones that'll count for sixes and sevens at the same time. So they are this. I hope you all just said mutual exclusive. All right. So our formula is done. That's my point. Okay. So when we counted sixes, boom, that's going to give me four out. Oh, how many cards in a deck? Excellent. 52. Plus four out of 52 is going to give me eight out of 52. Um, we reduce that down to so like two out of 13. But we'll just flip it to a decimal right away. Eight, which is eight divided by just two, 0 0.15. There we go. All right, now drawing out a black card or a four. Okay, if I pull on my black cards. If I was a real pro, I would actually have these all sorted out and have a whole bunch of different decks of cards at the same time, but I'm not. All right. But you can see, there we go. You can see that somewhere I've lost my four clubs. Oh, there's black card. There's my four clubs. All right. So if we count all the black cards, okay. But you notice the black cards would also be counted as fours. And I'm missing some fours, right? I go through my deck, find them all again. There's one. Should be a four diamond somewhere there. So we definitely have overlap because these guys can be in, move that up so you can see. So these two cards belong with the fours. 
and they also belong with the black cards and you can't count them twice. So these are not mutually exclusive. So we're gonna have to use a longer formula. All right, so the probability of a black card or a four is equal to the probability of giving a black card plus the probability of giving, oh, stop using the numbers, minus the probability of being black and four at the same time. Again, if you if you're going, I don't know when I'm supposed to add that at the end, just add it every time. If I want to put it here, I'd go P um, seven, oops, six and seven. It would look like that. And then I just put plus zero out of 52 there and it doesn't make any difference. It's not going to hurt you. So if you're not sure, throw it in there. All right, so all of these before I even start, we're talking about cards. Black cards. All right, so I'm not going to count them, but I know there's going to be 26 because there should be 13 spades and 13 clubs. So that's going to be 26. Now, if I count my fours, ah, there's going to be four of them. But the deal is, I counted the fours over here and I count the fours over here. So now I have to take away the cards that are both black and fours at the same time, which is going to be two. So 26 and four is 30 minus two is going to be 28 out of 52, which is, I want to say seven out of 13, but I'm just going to be lazy today. 28 divided by 52, 0. Point Eight or a black five. There's my eights. And I also need black fives. Black five, there's black five. There's another eight. There's another eight. If, by the way, if you remind me when you write the test, I will put the back page of my exam as a deck of cards, just so not everybody played as much cards growing up as I did. So you can have all the options there. All right, there's my eights. There's my black fives. There's none of these belong in there either way. So they are mutually exclusive. So then all I have to do Oops, move that up. The probability of an eight or a five, like that E, F, is the probability of eights plus the probability of fives. We don't need that other part because there's no overlap. So eights, there was one, two, three, four. And black fives, there's one, two. That's going to be six out of 52. To be three out of 26. See, I keep saying that, so I'm just going to do that. Because it just feels wrong not to reduce fractions in my world. There's a camera down. There we go. So six divided by 52, 0 0.12. Okay, probably the club. Okay, I'm not gonna insult you by showing you what the clubs look like and what the red cards look like, because you know that. And there's not gonna be any overlap. That's the way. probability of club or red 
means the probability of clubs plus the probability of red. If you count all the clubs, there should be no, 13 out of 52 plus the red ones. Okay, so the reds are going to be, let's see, that's going to be your hearts and diamonds. So that should be 13 and 13 is 26. 52, that's going to give me 39 out of 52, which should reduce down to three quarters or 0 0.75. And that makes sense. Like that's three quarters, right? So if you think about it, there's only four suits and you're talking about clubs, hearts, and diamonds, that's like three quarters. Just saying. All right, hearts are a six, oops. Those are gonna overlap. All right, there's my sixes. Now, my cards are all messed up. I think those are my hearts over here. Okay, so if I count my hearts, then that six, whoops, six needs to be over here with the hearts pile. And then when I go to count my sixes, it needs to be over here in this pile. Or you can't see that, that one. No, pardon me, there you go. So they are not mutually exclusive. We are counting this guy twice. It fits here and it fits there. So they are not mutually exclusive. I need to use the longer formula to adjust for that. Hearts, six is the probability of hearts plus the probability of sixes minus the overlap, minus the intersection, whichever word you want to use. Oopsies, not another H. H, intersection or and. There we go. All right, so probability of hearts, that should be 13 out of 52 plus sixes, there should be four out of 52 minus, we had one card, right? We had the six of hearts, that's gonna fit with hearts and it's gonna fit with sixes. So it's gonna be one out of 52. And 13, 17 minus one, is going to be 16 out of 52, which is going to be 4 out of 13. Or divide by 13, 0 0.31. And just because 16 divided by 52, there you go. Same answer. Doesn't matter which one you use. Okay. How are we doing? I think you guys should have this down pat. So again, I encourage you always, if you think it's starting to make a lot of sense, you need to work on your own. You need to try it yourself because you've got, you got to write a test. And if all you ever do is just copy down what I write, it's going to be really tough when you get something new on a test. You're not going to know how to approach it or how to try it. Probably you're going to be pretty nervous. All right, we got red cards for kings. Okay, I'm pretty sure that means there's gonna be an overlap. So there's my king. There's my red cards. Oh, there's more red cards up here. Lots of red cards. Oops, I'm not seeing that on screen. Lots of red cards. Oh, there's another king. Lots of red cards. More red cards. And I should be missing one more thing. And there's the other one. All right. So if we count our red cards, then these guys need to, these guys need to be in the red card pile, right? But then when we go to count our kings, 
they need to be in this pot. So not exclusive, we're gonna have to adjust for counting the kings twice. We'll call it red, we'll call it king. Use the probability of red plus the probability of king minus the probability of red and king at the same time. So the red cards, there's the, all the diamonds and all the hearts, that should be 26 out of 52, plus my kings is four out of 52, minus my two red kings, um, which would be two out of 52. So 26 plus four is 30, minus two should be 28. Out of 52, which is gonna be seven out of 13. Zero point five four. If you wanted to check it, you could probably just think it through. So if I want red cards or a king, uh, red cards is gonna be 26. If you think of all the red cards, and then you need to add in the king of spades and the king of clubs, which would be 26 plus two more gives you 28. All right. So diamond or jack, Is going to be probability of a diamond plus the probability of a jack. Is there such a beast that would be a diamond and a jack at the same time? Nope, nope, not that one. There he is. Boom. So there's our overlap. minus the probability of a card that's a diamond and a jack at the same time. So diamonds is 13 out of 52, plus jacks is four out of 52, minus our friendly neighborhood jack of diamonds, which is both one out of 52. And that's gonna give me 16 out of 52, which is four out of, thir out of 13. And I'm starting to see a lot of these answers are coming out the same. Four divided by 13, 0 0.31. All right. A red card or a heart? So there's my red. Here's my heart. Is it probability of the red cards? plus the probability of the hearts. All right, this is weird. Let me just get those cards out again. Find all the red ones. I have a friend who's a dealer at the casino. And I wish she was here to do this for me because she's like really cool with the cards got some skills. All right, so if I count my red cards, there should be 13 hearts and 13 diamonds. So that's going to be, whoops, 26 out of 52, plus my hearts, that should be another 13 out of 52. Is there overlap? Yeah minus the probability of the cards that are red and hearts at the same time which is 13 which is all of these that one seems a bit weird right because you're adding the hearts in there but when you talk about the red cards your hearts are already included so if maybe if, if we thought of it in terms of a Venn diagram, you 
here are my red cards. And then the hearts would just be a subset like that. Anyway, it's 26 out of 52, which is half or 0 0.5. Okay. Um, let me just do this because I was talking about Venn diagrams. If we look at this one, we'd have a circle that's for diamonds. We'd have a circle for jacks. And then right here in the middle, we have the jack of diamonds. So with the overlap, it can be the entire, it can be a subset or it can just be an overlap where it just not all of the cards fit. <gasps> Last question. This was a long one. A face card or an eight. Oh, okay. So probability of face card or an eight. It's the probability of my face cards. That's the probability of my eights. And I don't want to sort through my cards again, but you already know that there's no overlap there. So my face cards, that's going to be Jack, King, Queen. Um, so that's three in each set. So that should be 12. Out of 36, nah, 52. I'm doing too many dice questions. Plus my eights, which should be four out of 52. So 12 and four is 16 out of 52 or four out of 13. Um, I have no idea. Four divided by 13, 0 0.31. All right, I know that was a lot, but I'm hoping you're really starting to understand the mutually exclusive, not mutually exclusive. Oh, by the way, uh, while we're at it, face cards, eights. So there, in these last three questions, you've got the basically all the alternatives where we have non-mutually exclusive, right? We have an overlap. This is also non-mutually exclusive where we have a subset. And then you've got these where they're disjoint. Thanks for playing it around along with me. Um, and probably thank you for your patience as I was playing around with the cards. Have a spectacular day.